Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a deep dive into something pretty fascinating. Um, it's a new development in biotech AI engineered stem cell proteins. You might know OpenAI from their work on language models, but get this. Go. They've partnered with Retro Biosciences, and they're applying that AI expertise to making stem cells more efficiently. Now, for those who might not know, Hoko. Stem cells are like the blank slates of our bodies. They can develop into any cell type, heart cells, brain cells, you name it. The problem is, creating them in the lab has been, well, a slow and inefficient process, you know, like trying to find a needle in a haystack. And the success rate is often less than 1%. But that could all change because of OpenAI's new AI model, GPT-4B Micro. So what makes this AI so unique is it's not just, you know, analyzing data, it's redesigning proteins. These proteins are called Yamanaka factors, and they act like a set of instructions guiding adult cells like skin cells to revert back into stem cells. GPT-4P Micro analyzes these Yamanaka factors and suggests modifications, making them way more effective. And early research suggests that these AI-engineered proteins could be up to 50 times more effective. To put it into perspective, imagine being able to produce stem cells, not in months, but in mere days. This could revolutionize medicine. It could pave the way for stem cell therapies that are personalized, you know, tailored to your unique DNA. Think curing diseases we thought were untreatable, like Parkinson's or Alzheimer's. It's really mind-blowing. This AI is coming up with designs that, honestly, human scientists wouldn't have thought of. It's like having a super-powered research assistant that can explore, like, this vast universe of possibilities, suggesting tweaks and modifications that push the boundaries of what we thought was possible. This speed and efficiency are crucial because traditional protein engineering is painstakingly slow. Instead of testing every single protein tweak in a lab, which takes years, AI lets us explore a vast landscape of possibilities through computer simulations. Then we can narrow down the most promising candidates and focus those lab experiments on those specific modifications. This combination of AI and human ingenuity is like having a turbocharged engine for scientific discovery. But labs aren't going to be obsolete, not at all. Scientists are still essential for designing experiments, interpreting results, and ensuring that these AI-engineered proteins actually work as intended in living cells. What's really fascinating is that this technology's implications extend far beyond just stem cells. It has the potential to revolutionize drug development, create new materials, and even engineer new forms of life. We're talking about a world where we could design proteins to target specific diseases, repair damaged tissues, or even enhance our own abilities. It's a brave new world out there, and AI is leading the charge. But as we delve deeper into this realm of AI-driven biology, it's crucial that we proceed with caution and carefully consider the potential implications of such powerful technology. So now you might be wondering, like, how does OpenAI's approach, you know, how does it compare to other AI breakthroughs in biology, like um, AlphaFold from Google DeepMind? Well, AlphaFold was incredible at predicting. It predicted the 3D structure of proteins. And that was a huge step forward because understanding a protein's shape, it's key to understanding how it functions. But GPT-4B Micro was taking a different route. Instead of focusing on structure, GPT-4B Micro is all about protein interactions. It's trained in a massive amount of data about protein sequences and how they interact with each other. You can kind of think of it like this. AlphaFold gives us the blueprint of a machine. While GPT-4B Micro gives us the instruction manual for making the machine run better, both are incredibly valuable, but they serve different purposes. And the results from GPT-4B Micro, well, they're truly remarkable. It's suggesting modifications that are so innovative so outside the box, that honestly, you and scientists might never have considered them. It's like we have this super-powered research assistant, capable of exploring countless possibilities at lightning speed. Now let's shift gears for a moment and talk about Retro Biosciences, OpenAI's partner in this groundbreaking research. Retro was founded back in 2021 by Joe Betts LaCroix, Beto Huel, and he's this visionary entrepreneur who's really passionate about tackling you know, the challenges of aging. Retro has quickly become a major player in the longevity research field. And with like a $180 million investment from Sam Altman, he's, you know, he's a CEO of OpenAI, I mean, it's pretty clear they have serious ambitions. Retro has put together this team of like over 60 brilliant scientists, and they're pursuing five different research programs, all aimed at understanding and combating the aging process. One of the key focuses is on something called in vivo reprogramming which basically means transforming cells directly within the body. So imagine you could rejuvenate your organs without, you know, invasive procedures. But Retro isn't just focused on research. They're actively developing practical therapies to help people live longer, healthier lives. And that's where their partnership with Multiply Labs comes in. 
Multiply Labs specializes in automating cell therapy manufacturing, which is essential for scaling up production and making these potential treatments available to more people. So this collaboration between OpenAI and Retro Biosciences well, really signifies a powerful convergence between you know, the world of AI and biotechnology. It's a clear indicator that AI is going to revolutionize medicine and transform our whole approach to health and longevity. It's a really fascinating time to be alive, witnessing the birth of a new era where the lines between biology and technology are blurring. The possibilities, it seems, are endless. Okay, so we've explored this incredible potential of AI-engineered stem cell proteins. But it's important to think about some of the questions that come with a technology this powerful, like what about access to these treatments? Will everyone be able to benefit or will it just be, you know, for the wealthy? It's a real concern. And one we need to address, we need to make sure that these benefits are available to everybody, that the cost doesn't become a barrier to, you know, these potentially life-saving treatments. And that'll take some real collaboration between governments, industry leaders, researchers, you know, to find solutions that make these therapies accessible to all. Now, we've talked about the potential benefits, access, but we also need to consider regulations, like with any powerful new technology. The right regulations are essential to make sure it's used safely and responsibly. So we need clear guidelines for research, for clinical trials, and for monitoring any risks. I know regulations can sometimes feel like a roadblock, but in this case, it's really crucial to make sure that we're using this incredible power of AI for good and that we're minimizing any potential harm. It's about finding that balance but a balance we definitely need to find. Looking ahead, it's clear that AI is gonna play a huge role in stem cell research and regenerative medicine in general. It's already helping us figure out this complex world of stem cell biology and how to create and use them in new ways. And as AI keeps getting better, well, we can expect even more groundbreaking discoveries. Imagine being able to repair damaged hearts or regenerate spinal cords or even grow entirely new organs for transplants. What was once science fiction well, it's becoming a real possibility. With AI's help, we're really pushing the boundaries of medical science. So that wraps up our deep dive into the fascinating world of AI-engineered stem cell proteins. Hope you found it insightful and thought-provoking. Until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep pushing the boundaries of what's possible.